Hello everyone, Tim and Game here, and today I have the pleasure of bringing you another one of my FIFA 14 tutorials. Now today's tutorial is going to be covering defending and it's going to be looking at the importance of appreciating the space you give up when you defend in a certain way. So hopefully by sitting down and watching this you'll tighten up at the back and concede less goals. So let's get straight on with the tutorial. Now, a very common statement you often hear pundits and football commentators mention is that good players stand still. And what these commentators mean by that is, you know, it's very, very easy for a player to just run around the pitch. You know, all you have to be is, is a fit human being to do that. You know, just work out and you'll be able to charge around. To be a really top quality player, the appreciation of space is much more important because if you realise you're in a good position, you don't have to run around because you're already in that place. And this can apply to either attacking or defending. And as you can see with the clip paused here, my opponent is on a break. You know, he threw the ball upfield to the unmarked Olivier Giroud. And as you can see at the bottom of the screen, you know, Theo Walcott, his right winger, has got a run on my fullback. And this is a really, really dangerous moment because, as everyone knows here, Theo Walcott is blisteringly quick. And as you can see in the bottom right side of the screen, there is a huge amount of space in behind my back line for Theo to exploit. Now this is where my first tip and you know the core theme of this video really comes into play here. If you have a look at my highlighted defender, you can already see that I've reacted to this. You know, a lot of players are very, very ball centric when they're defending, so they only ever focus on the ball and the player in possession. And this is a very, very dangerous thing because you know, the main threat to your defence is space. It's not the players necessarily, because if you've got a guy on the ball and he's got four players around him, he's no threat whatsoever. But as you can see in this example, you know, I've got a quick winger who's got the run on my fullback into a massive amount of space. And if I wasn't aware of this problem, I'd be in a huge amount of trouble now, because it would basically mean that Theo Walker has a free run in on goal. But as you can see, you know, my centre-back, the player who I've highlighted right now, I am already turning him around and this is before Olivier Giroud has released the pass and the reason why I can tell that this is going to happen and Giroud is going to pass this way is because I'm aware of the major danger and the major danger to me in this particular situation is not Olivier Giroud you know yes he's in a lot of space himself but he's well with inside his own half and he's not going to be able to skill past my entire team and score because I can quickly appreciate that, I am then able to turn my centre back around, buying myself that extra, you know, half a second to a second of time to get into position. And as you can see as the clip rolls forward here, you know, I eventually managed to get my centre back into a position to slow Theo Walcott down. And that forces him to try a skill move, and that you know, little two second delay enables my other players to get back, surround him, and win the ball back. And this is the really key part of this defending. You know, I made that look very, very easy in the end, but that was a really, really threatening situation. The only reason why I could defend that so easily was because I very, very quickly realised the danger that the space in behind my backline created. And this is what I want you guys to try and do when you defend. You know, don't focus all of your attention on the ball and the player on the ball. Look for the space. Find out where the most dangerous part of that space is and then react to it accordingly. And as you can see there, just by doing that, I've turned a potentially very dangerous opposition break into a relatively easy defensive play, which wins me the ball back and launches my own attack. Now, this next clip is another example of how the appreciation of space can be absolutely vital in defending. And this clip is another good example of a nice, solid defensive play. Now, as you can see, when the clip pauses here, slightly different game situation. Now, it's in the same match. But instead of being a very, very good opposition break, it's now just part of a general pattern of play. You know, my opponent's had the ball for a little bit. He's passing it around and he's eventually found his way to the right wing with Mikhail Arteta on the ball. Now, this is the immediate first thing for you to notice, the change in personnel. Like I mentioned earlier, the fact that it was Theo Walcott running through earlier and not a more sluggish player made it top, top priority to deal with that threat. However, as most of you guys know, Mikhail Arteta is not a tricky explosive winger. He's a very, very good middle-of-the-park creative player who isn't particularly quick. 
So as soon as you can see who's on the ball here, you can immediately notice that the threat is not round the outside. If this was Theo Walcott here, there is a very, very real danger of him just knocking the ball past me on my outside and trying to put a cross in the middle due to his pace. But in this situation, that's exactly what I want Michael Arteta to do. I want him to be forced wide because he's not great at crossing. He's not particularly quick. And if you have a look here at the rest of the field, he has no real space to work with here. Look at the middle of the park. Olivier Giroud, he's got three players around him. He's got one player making a run just inside of him. But he's covered by a midfielder. If you look slightly above the screen, just under the scoreboard, by the referee, there's another Arsenal player, again, with somebody marked. And I even have a spare midfielder in the middle to react to any changes in situation. So if you immediately look at this still image, you can tell that I'm in a very, very good defensive position. And this is the key thing, you know. I've immediately glanced at that when I'm playing and gone, this is solid. And in this situation... You want to try and close the space available to Mikhail Arteta as much as possible. Now, as you can see as the clip begins to roll on a little further, I jockey Mikhail Arteta trying to show him down the line. And this is exactly what I've managed to do here. As you can see as the clip pauses now, my defensive position is even better because it's very, very unlikely for Mikhail Arteta to put a good cross in from this position. The one midfielder he had nearby him is actually now running offside, so he can't use him. And again, every other Arsenal player is under pressure. And the great thing about this as well, look at Mikhail Arteta's body position. He is now heading towards the touchline, and this is what you want to do in this situation. You know, a lot of people, when they see something like this, they go, oh, there's no one there's no one nearby i can just put a challenge in fifa and football in general is all about timing your challenge you know if i'd have just gone sliding in as early as i possibly could and missed the challenge all of a sudden i've created a problem for myself because before when there was no space available because i've been rash and reckless i've created an opportunity for my opponent just through bad defensive play what I've done in this situation is because there's no immediate danger for me to deal with, I've just tried to corral and manoeuvre Arteta towards the sideline. Because don't forget, the sideline is on your side when you're defending. You know, your attacker only has a set amount of space to work with. If you can push him up against the edge of the field, he's going to get more and more pressured. And then eventually, as you can see when the clip rolls on here... I shut down the space so much that I can put the tackle in and win the ball back in a favourable situation to me. Because if I would have bungled that challenge up a little bit and nudged the ball away or not quite timed the challenge, it wouldn't have really mattered. Because like I mentioned, the guys ran offside above me. You know, Arteta's not really going to be able to put too effective a cross in. And I can deal with that mistake. You know, because I very, very early appreciated that I was in a strong position this time, I didn't have to react to anything in particular, and I could just calmly pressure him, wait for him to get into a favourable situation for me, and then put the challenge in. So this is really what I wanted to get across to you guys today. I see so many people message me week after week saying they struggle with defending, and that's why I always like to bring out these tutorials every now and again, looking at specific areas. And I have to say, today's tutorial is very, very important, you know. If you can very, very quickly, at a glance, see what the most threatening part of an opponent's move is, or see that you're in a good position, you can set yourself up to be much more successful on defence. And this tutorial has showed you today that just by being able to appreciate your defensive surroundings, you can very, very effectively shut down opposing attacks. It doesn't matter whether they're slow-paced passing build-ups or very, very direct counter-attacking play. If you can quickly and accurately associate the main point of danger, you can defend much more effectively. So guys, thank you so, so much for watching the video. I really hope you've enjoyed it. And as always, thanks for watching and have a great day.